Well, folks, one of Nikola's latest customers has revealed that charging the Nikola Tray battery electric semi truck might actually be more expensive than fueling a diesel semi truck. This is a pretty big revelation, and in this video, I want to discuss exactly what this means for the future of the demand for something like the Nikola Tray and whether or not this is a real concern for investors and anybody who's looking to adopt EV semi trucks. Because obviously, we understand that these trucks already cost more upfront. And so if the maintenance and running costs don't add up, then it will make absolutely no sense for anybody to invest and buy these trucks. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing I'll be doing is actually reacting to a video where this specific data were discussed about the charging costs of the Nikola Trey after a 1200 mile run with one of the pilot testers of the Nikola Trey. This is a pretty big deal, and so I want you guys to listen to this very carefully, and at the end, I will give you my reaction and analysis for why this might be the case. Alan, I saw an interesting post online. A gentleman that I know, he got a Nikola Bev for his company, a Nikola um, Trey, and they've been driving around Florida. They've been showing it to clients, and uh, he said he's had it for a little over a month. They've put 1,269 miles on it, and mm -hmm. he talked about a little of the good and the bad here. The bad he was talking about was... Because of the nature of the vehicle, there's nowhere to charge these trucks, right? So he was subject to all commercial public charging. And in doing so, he had to pay about 33 cents on energy fuel cost per kilowatt hour. Um, and the breakdown was like, well, this truck costs three times as much, and I'm not saving any money on fuel, like has kind of been promised. So what's going on with these EV trucks? Are we being sold a bill of goods here? No, 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 not yet. It's so early <laughs> on the infrastructure side. No, I don't think so. I mean, yes, they're really expensive. So in that sense, you're paying a lot of money for them. But ultimately, you know, th th this guy, I read, your, I read your thing that you sent me. And I, I, I got to tell you, th this is it's a true story, but it isn't a complete story. Because because what really happens with so much of this, and Nikola would be happy to to lease him a mobile charger at 175 kilowatts an hour so you could charge up pretty quick. And that electricity would not cost you near 33 cents an hour, a kilowatt hour. Um, national average is about 12 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, just so you know. Um, but you can obviously, you know, one of the big problems right now for uh, electric trucks, heavy trucks, is there's no infrastructure to speak of. And until we get some either, you know, behind the fence at a company, at a fleet, or some kind of national uh you know, infrastructure going. And you got a little bit of that starting. I mean, Daimler and and, and BlackRock and uh, I always forget the third party are spending $650 million to put in truck infrastructure for electric trucks. But it's not there and it won't be there tomorrow. So it's going to be kind of catch as catch can. And this guy's lucky he was able to charge a truck anywhere, uh, yeah. even if he had to use, oh, a, yeah. you know, a car charger because – uh, you know, there just isn't much out there yet. So you need to, as 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 fleets decide they're going to dip their toe into this area, or maybe even, you know, like Cisco went in for 800 trucks, they're going to have to think about how they're going to charge those trucks, what installation are they going to do, or where are they going to be able to charge? And so, uh, you know, it's a two-pronged thing here. Uh, no joke, I guess, no, no pun intended there for electricity. But but I think, you know, they've got to have both. It's it's not sustainable, obviously, at 33 cents a, a kilowatt hour. Well, is it sustainable for California? Like California just put out a notice right now, right? They have this big push that you have to be this way at the beginning of the year. Your trucks have to be a certain emission level. They really want BEV in trucks out that way. But they're telling you you got to set your house to 78 degrees to not charge your electric vehicles, to not run your dishwasher. Yeah. I, like it, I'm hearing two different messages. Make it make sense, Alan. I can't I can't help with California, man. I lived there, but I still don't understand it. So, uh, no, seriously, it's it's competing agendas. Right. I mean, you know, we want to get these ports cleaned up. We want to get drayage cleaned up. And, and that's happening. You know, companies like NFI and others are, are buying the electric trucks and they're putting in the installations to charge them. And they are cleaning up uh, some of the environment. But the problem is you've got other things going on in California, like an older underpowered grid that can't really sustain all this. So so the grid improvements have to happen before you can even think about having a, a wide uh, array of electric trucks out there. Yeah, and 438 some odd chargers have to be produced per day for the next eight years to reach uh, the level to be able to do that stuff. Well, there you go. It looks like it's completely game over for EV semi trucks and they will never catch on because it looks like charging them is much more expensive than a diesel truck. 
Well, let's try to filter out the bullshit from what the facts are and where we need to be heading to really get these costs down. As you can see, the main thing you want to pay attention to, first of all, here is that it costs around 33 cents per kilowatt hour, not kilowatts. This is actually wrong. Kilowatts is a power. Kilowatt hours is energy. But anyways, it costs around 33 cents per kilowatt hour for this specific company to charge a Nikola tray at a public charging station. Now, this is a key word here. This means these guys had to go to somebody who already built the infrastructure for charging, probably a level two or a level three charger, which is either AC high power around 200 volts or DC fast charging, which is obviously something like this Tesla supercharger at a public charging station. Now, it's important to keep in mind, public charging stations are always going to be significantly more expensive to charge at than if you're doing it at home or at your own facility which is one of the reasons why Nikola is selling the mobile charging trailer. It's funny, a hilarious number of people laughed at Nikola when they launched the MCT, but if you now look at the data that I just showed you, it shows you exactly why people who wanna actually buy these mobile charging trailers. Because essentially they are taking the DC fast charger you see in the back right here and putting it in a portable chassis that you can take anywhere to charge, meaning you don't need to use the public networks to charge your truck, which like I just said, is always more expensive to charge at. Meaning you can put this MCT in your facility and get it up and running in less than a month. Meanwhile, obviously it takes around six to 12 months for an actual charging infrastructure to be built out at a facility and you can get cheaper costs because obviously you're not getting that markup that typically a company would charge you to charge at their public charging station. And we've already seen so many studies showing that cars like the Tesla Model 3 are significantly less expensive to own than a gas car, even if their upfront costs are higher. At least over a three to five year period, the cost of ownership comes down significantly because you're spending less money on gas and you're spending less money maintaining the vehicle itself. And as you can see, no matter what kind of vehicle you own, it'll still be less to charge it from a cost per mile basis than its equivalent ICE car. But the most important part of this report is the fact that the cost per mile for this specific pilot test while charging at one of the most expensive public charging stations was around 60 cents per mile. Well, if you compare that to the average class A tractor trailer that is a day cab, that comes out to around $1.89 per mile, which is obviously the average of an ICE or a diesel class A truck. And so even when charging at one of the most expensive stations and spending maybe let's say three hours of time, you're saving significant costs per mile, which is obviously something that's going to matter a lot in the long run and is going to obviously reduce the total cost of ownership of the entire vehicle. And well, for those people that are saying there's absolutely no infrastructure to charge these vehicles, well, we were in that same scenario about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, Tesla actually sold around 2,400 Tesla Model S's in 2012. And guess what today? Well, we have more than enough infrastructure to charge most of these vehicles in a mild range within the United States. And as you can see back then in 2009 to 2012, there were barely any charging stations out there, which is obviously the same case we're experiencing right now for these electric semi trucks. So the chances are in the next 10 years, the infrastructure is gonna grow exponentially just like it did for new public charging outlets like this one for consumers. And as you can see, the cost that this pilot test inherited around 30 cents per kilowatt hour falls right around the range that an average level three charger tends to cost within the United States. So overall, this isn't that big of a surprise. It just sets into perspective the fact that we still have a lot more work to do when it comes to the infrastructure side for not only batteries, but also making sure we have right chargers at the right places. And that is exactly why I'm investing in so many other companies that are helping to strengthen the grid, not only obviously creating more demand for vehicles. But as usual, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.